Okay, next lesson. Simplify the expression. We have this weird looking exponent, 64 to the 1 half power. This is what is called a rational exponent. Okay, when it's a fraction exponent, it's called a rational exponent. Okay, that's the name for it. This is how you evaluate a rational exponent. You're going to make a radical, and the degree is going to be whatever the bottom of your rational exponent is. It's a 2. Okay. Now cross out the 2, and then inside you're going to put 64 to the first power, but you can just put 64 because the first power is insignificant. So the square root of 64 is 8, but it could be positive or negative Okay, because it's even. If it's odd, we're not going to be putting that positive negative. Now 64 to the one-third power, so again I circle the 3 on the bottom, okay, and I make a radical of a degree 3, and I put 64 in it, be just to the first power, if it's a, if it's a second power you got to put that with it, but it's not. So it's a cube root of 64, now cube roots, okay. The cube root of 64 is equal to 4. By the way, I messed up on this typing machine. Cube root of 64 is 4. And it would just be the positive. We would not put a negative with that. 100 to the 1 half power. So we make a radical, and it's of a degree 2. 100 to the first would just be 100. Okay. So, a square root, the square root of 100 is 10, and now it's back to being a positive and a negative. Now, don't get freaked out on these next ones, okay? 7 to the 1 half power times 7 to the 1 half power. Now, you're going to make just one radical, because you see you have both of them as 2's. So you're just going to make one radical of a degree 2. And inside you're going to put 7 to the first times 7 to the first. But we know 7 to the first is the first power is insignificant. So that's just going to be 7 times 7. Well then 7 times 7 we know is 49. And then what's the square root of the number 49? It's 7. It could be positive or negative though. Okay. Okay, next one. Negative 5 to the 1 3rd power times negative 5 to the 1 3rd power times negative 5 to the 1 3rd power. Okay. So, look at all your rational exponents. They all have the same bottom number. If they don't, we'll worry about that when it happens. So we make a 3. And then those first powers, we don't really need it. They're ones that are insignificant. Okay. And then I put negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. Okay. So then I make a cubed root. And then I put net multiply those together. So negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 125. Okay, so the cube root of negative 125, so I go 3 second caret negative 125, and that would be negative 5, okay? But just the negative 5, it won't be positive and negative because it's an odd root. Okay, this one's kind of different. 6 to the 1 half power times 14 to the 1 half power. So we make one radical of a degree 2. And inside, 6 to the 1st times 14 to the 1st. But that's really just 6 times 14. Okay, so I take 6 times 14, that's 84. Now, go 2nd caret, 2 second caret, 84. Ooh, oofda. That's irrational. If it's irrational, you put square root times square root, both of a 2, okay? That's what, this, what you do. This is the first time this has happened, because usually it's just right on the list, or it makes it into an integer. This time it's not an integer, it's irrational. So this is what we need to do if we find about, go to evaluate one of our radicals and it's irrational. You make your two roots, okay? Okay, so 84. Now, it's a square root, so we're on this list. So I'd start right here, okay? 84 divided by 81. 
we've done this before, decimal. 84 divided by 64, decimal. 84 divided by 49 is a decimal. 84 divided by 36 is a decimal. Divided by uh, 25 is a decimal. Divided by 16, decimal. Divide by 9, decimal. And then divide by 4. If we, if we can't divide by 4, we're just going to circle that as my answer, but it does divide, or sorry, 84 divided by 4, my bad. Okay, I got it. So you put the number you divided by 4 and the, the, the result you got, which is 21. So this now becomes 2, so it's 2 radical of a 2 over 21. Okay, so that's how to deal with it if it's irrational. Okay, next one we have 2 to the 1 half power times 18 to the 1 half power. Now both the rational exponents have a 2, so we just make 1 square root and we put 2 times 18. So 2 times 18 is 36. And the square root of 36, I don't believe, is irrational. It's not, so we just put 6, okay? It's an even root, so positive or negative, okay? And up here should have been positive or negative, too, because that's an even root, okay? Next one, 5 to the 1 third power times 25 to the 1 third power. I forgot to put that on this one. Even if you have to go off to the side and simplify it because it's an irrational, you need the positive negative on an even. Okay, so both roots have a 3, so I make a radical. It's a cubed root, and it'd be 5 to the first, which is 5, times 25 to the first, which is 25. So then 5 times 25 is going to be 125. Now I go to evaluate the cube root of 125. I would use the calculator, okay? If it's a perfect integer, we have our answer. If it's irrational, we have to go off to the side and make the two square roots. Okay, I got 5, and we don't put the positive negative in front of it because it's odd, so it's 5. Okay, and then the last one we're going to do like this. 125 to the 1 fourth power times 5 to the 1 fourth power. So both of those, it would be a fourth root. 125 to the first is 125, and 5 to the first is 5. Okay. So now I find the product of 125 and 5, and I get 625. And we're going to go find 625. That's 625. And now I evaluate the fourth root, 4 second caret, 625 is 5. So it's even, so that would be a positive and a negative. Okay? So that's what you're doing on that part. Now the second part of this assignment, write each expression in radical form. Now, is that exponent positive? Yes, it is. That's good. Okay? If it's negative, we've got to do something. Now, is that a proper fraction, meaning is the top smaller than the bottom? It is, okay? So now you circle it, make your root of a 5. Then x to the first, you can put x to the first or you can just put x. So the fifth root of x. Is that positive? Yes. Is it proper? Yes. Top smaller than bottom. So we make a sixth root. y to the first can just be expressed as y. Okay, now if it's y to the second, I need to see the second, but anything to the first power can just be expressed as itself. x to the three-fifths power, is that positive? Yes. Is it proper? Yes. Okay. So, your radical is going to be of a fifth degree, and then inside you need to write x to the third. Okay. y to the nine-fourths power, nine over four. Is that negative exponent? Nope, it's positive, that's good, but it's improper. The top's bigger than the bottom. So here's what you need to do when it's improper. If you're good in your head, you know that that's two and one fourth. If you're not good at that in your head, just go nine ABC four ABC, and then rewrite that as Y to the second, Y to the two and one fourth power, okay? So that's what we're dealing with now. So now here's what we do. Circle the whole number, and you need to drop that down. Don't put it in a radical, nothing. You have two full factors of y. 
and then the one fourth power you make a fourth root and y to the first would just be y. Okay, So that's how you need to handle an improper frat rational exponent. Okay, our next one, y to the negative th 3 over 2 power. Now we have a negative power, but that's easy to fix. You just put a 1 over it and make it positive. Now you have an improper, though. The top's bigger than the bottom, so you need to simplify that. It'd be 1 and a half, or you can just ABC it. Instead of dividing, you would just ABC it. You won't be able to just divide it, okay? So you got 1 over it and you have y to the first and then the one half power we make a square root radical of a degree two and then y inside because it's just to the first okay and that you could just write as y as well okay x to the negative eleven over three power so you put a one over so you can make your rational exponent positive but it's improper okay so when it's improper, you need to do 11 ABC3 or do it in your head. It's 3 and 2 thirds. I can't teach mental math. Either you have it or you don't. It goes into 11 3 times, 2 left over, 3 and 2 thirds. That's something you kind of learn in 5th, 6th grade, but it is what it is. 3 and 2 thirds, okay? So 1 over, you've got X to the third for sure. Then with that rational exponent, you make a cubed root. And you put x to the second since that's on top. Okay. So the full one you just take out, x to the third, and then you make a cubed root. So you count for the whole number, then you make a cubed root, and inside you put x to the second. Okay, I got plenty more of those. X to the negative two thirds power. Put a one over it so that you can make your rational exponent positive. Now that's proper, okay, so I don't need to do the ABC shenanigans, okay. So 1 over, you make a cubed root, put X inside, and it's going to be X to the second. There is a rule about not having radicals in the denominator, but I don't want to deal with that today, okay. M to the 7 over 6, now it's not negative, so we don't need to put a 1 over it, but it's improper. So we need to rewrite that. 7 AB6, ABC6 is 1 and 1 sixth. Okay, so you got M to the first for sure. Now M to the 1 sixth, you make a sixth root, and then you put M to the first, or just M, it doesn't matter. Okay, you have the first powers in your answer, that's fine. N to the negative 11 eighths power, put a 1 over, make it positive. That's improper. Okay. So 11 ABC 8 is 1 and 3 eighths. So 1 and 3 eighths. So what do we do with 1 and 3 eighths? Well, we put N to the first. Okay, take a sec care of that. Then that 3 eighths power, you make an eighth root, and you put N to the third inside of it. So 1 over N, or N to the first, times the eighth root of N to the third. Okay, x to the 10 sevenths power, okay? It's positive, but it's improper. No improper is allowed here. That's 1 and 3 sevenths, okay? So we're going to have x to the first power, and then we need to make a radical with a degree 7, and we put x to the third power. Okay, y to the negative 3 fourths power. We put a 1 over because we need to make that positive, and that's proper, okay? We don't need to do any ABC crap, okay? So there's going to be no full factors of y because it's not a, a proper fraction. We just account for the bottom by making a fourth root, and inside you put y to the third. Okay? That's a q. q to the 4 thirds power. Now we don't need the 1 over it, but it is improper, so we need to rewrite that as a mixed number rational exponent. So 1 and 1 third. So what do we do with that? Well, circle the whole number, circle the fraction, if that helps. So you got q to the first power, okay? Then with the fraction, you make a cubed root and put q to the first, okay? 
or just Q. If you don't put first powers, that's fine. You can just put Q. Okay, and then finally, x to the 5 fourths power. We're not putting a 1 over it because it's a positive rational exponent. Okay? Well, it's improper though. Top's bigger than bottom. So I simplify that out. 1 and 1 fourth. So circle the whole, circle the fraction. So you got x to the first. Okay? Then you account for the one fourth by making a fourth root, and inside you put x to the power of one. Okay, those power of ones you can get rid of if they're ones. So it's x with a fourth root of x.